because we had so much fun recording with her. We really did. We had a, a minor which Zoom room are we in before yeah. we started the conversation. I was, it was touch and go. I was like, are we going to be able to even record this thing? And then, man, we just like hit the ground running. Topsy, her energy is amazing. We just got into it immediately. We couldn't. <laughs> yeah. the ener- it was just flowing. We couldn't stop. We didn't even get to like our transparency questions because we were just like, we immediately were in it. Like you, you had to be like, hold on, I gotta, I gotta start recording this. <laughs> and Topsy is like, everything I say is transparent. Yeah. <laughs> Not that other people aren't, but she's just like, I'm gonna be real, raw, really fast. <laughs> and that's what we loved about this interview. We talk about being seen online, being a projector, human design. Oh, yes, <laughs> that is a big part of it. Scorpio. Yeah. Yeah. Mindset as an entrepreneur and someone who is in the public eye and. Mm-hmm. I really like how are you safe to be seen by other people if you're just getting started in your business. And if you're not just getting started, you've been doing this for a while, but you feel like maybe you've been inauthentic and you're trying to show your true self. How do you get there? Like, how do you ease people into knowing who you are without, I don't know, losing your entire following? And also, she really shares a lot of what she has learned from working with people Topsy is an incredible leader, coach, and she works a lot on emotional intelligence and teaching other entrepreneurs how to run their businesses more efficiently with more of a combination between data and intuition and really bridging the gap. So naturally, we were fast friends with Topsy. And she has a background as a therapist, and I love, love when people go from therapy into coaching work because... I'm just like, yeah, I trust you. (laughs) I trust that you know what the fuck's up. And Topsy definitely does. Oh, she had such a good take also on the business coach versus life coach that Mm -hmm. just you got to listen to. But I was like, you know, that that's real. Yeah, she's phenom. You're going to love her. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. That is fascinating because I think one of the things I loved about your podcast and finding it after I heard you on there is that you incorporate all of these things into one. And we talk about this so much. We're like, be your multifaceted, multi-hyphenated self. So pop culture and business, they do go together. It does go together. And it just, and honestly, it brought so much joy. Um, My podcast, Crush the Mindset Spiral. I was like, I don't know if people are going to fuck with the vibe of this because I just don't want to sit and like, you know, yammer on and on about business shit. Like, can we like talk about something else? Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about other shit. You know what I mean? And then like, I'll weave in the business stuff later because I think the reason why I've been able to, I think, be an online business owner for as long as I have is because I'm fucking and entertaining only because I talk about the real shit. Like I'm not on here trying to be anything else but myself. And one of the things that I notice, I'm a human design. I love human design. I don't know if you guys are into human design. Oh, yes. Are we into human design? As we speak, I literally on my desk have <laughs> the book, book of destiny. Stop it. I'm is, dead. <laughs> you have this one? It's, no, I don't have it. Should I get oh, it? Oh, you should get it. It's all the incarnation crosses, which are oh, you know, yes. like so okay. hard to find online. It is so hard. Let's not even talk about it. Why, are they, okay, why are they gatekeeping? It's honestly very insulting because I'm like, where is it? Is this behind a paywall? The fuck is going on here? You know how they always say, oh, yeah. You know how they always say, like, oh, you don't need to hire an expert. You can just like Google piecemeal shit together. I was willing to do that for human design. I was willing to pit myself out, fucking Google shit, piecemeal. I want to find out more about this and could not find hardly anything except other people's blog posts and their interpretations of Ra's work, right? So I'm like, Okay, but this isn't helpful for me. I'm trying to hear right. straight from the source, honey. You, you need, you need like a really, well, actually we have a really good human design reader, like Ooh. who's, who we're very tight with, who we send a lot of people to, if you want a referral. Yes, but okay, yeah, you're a projector, that. right? Yes, I'm a human design projector. I'm a projector as well. And so, oh, and Wallace are. is an MG. 
Yeah. Yeah. What? Okay. So I wait for the invitation of one of my, um, I am also a person that, um, can get very bitter if my, um, <laughs> Same. You, you and me both, my friend. <laughs> oh, I get, I literally get hot, right? Like it's, it's, it's definitely the dark side of me, but I embrace it fully. And like I need to investigate something and no, I need to investigate something thoroughly, um, in order to really make an aligned purchase because I am very, prone to making in the moment like I'm a course hoe I love buying course yeah. hoe. oh yes <laughs> that so wait, is my an emotional authority yes I Me am too. and what are oh. your numbers what's your profile hold on hold on, hold on. one third what, what what is it I'm not like that great at it but it's like yeah yeah I'm, one yeah, three one three. I don't know what that means though, because I can't find a lot of <laughs> shit online. It's like, okay, this is cool and all. Now I know this, but uh, I need to know more. Y'all are leaving me on a cliffhanger. Oh, yeah. Hey, it's like addicting. Ariana Mag is one of our people, uh-huh. and we're we're gonna send you to her after because I'm pretty sure. Yeah, she has. She just started her own business, I think, on consulting. consulting. Yeah, she should. Fun. As she should. Yes, I'm going to go and check her out. What I was going to say as a projector, I am able to just like, you know, you know, see things. And one of the things I see and I also experience in my coaching practice, a lot of people come and hire me when they're ready to stop faking the funk for Instagram and for social media. And they're ready to get fucking real and get honest because there's a lot of people lying. And I know that that's not a word people like to use. Okay. That is why I do what I do. You got to call a thing a thing. It's not about, Oh, you know, projecting the version of yourself online that you want people to see. No, people be lying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Let's call it what it is. It doesn't sound good, but it's because we have demonized certain words in mm-hmm. the English language and we have completely started to fucking artificially fluff our way out of conversations and out of self accountability. And so a lot of people want to hire me when they're ready to be authentic, when they're ready to stop pretending as if shit is okay, when shit is really falling apart. They're ready to finally be seen for the expert they are, not the expert they thought that they needed to show other people that they were. They want to stop lying about their income or exaggerating their income, right? Like this is the real shit. There's a lot of people saying having seven figure mentor in their bios, but they really mean their brand has made seven figures over the last however many years. That's not the same. Revenue and profit are different, baby. Revenue and profit are different. And they know this, but they also know the, the trigger words that make people want to buy. And I don't judge Mm -hmm. them for it. And that's why they come to me because they know I, I see right through them. So by the mm-hmm. time they come to me and they say, I need to be honest, I'm like, I've been waiting for you, boo. Let's go. <laughs> Let's well, go. I'm sure your background in psychology, too, you, yeah. you have this unique perspective of like being an online person and like a cultural commentator and immerse. Yes. Which yeah. Oh, cultural that. commentator. I ain't heard that one. Okay. I just oh, need to yeah. let that simmer. I need to let <laughs> yeah. that simmer. Add, add that, just add that to your resume, you know? Yes. Cultural commentator. Yes. That's but, me. Like, but, but I think like, honestly, the people who are most tapped into culture and can speak on it, it's all about psychology and understanding people. Like, isn't that what yes. reality TV is? It's just like understanding, understanding human nature. Yeah. Yes. Understanding people, understanding human nature. Absolutely. Absolutely. I never even thought about it that way. But I do see people for who they really are, not who they at least until like I obviously it's not obvious at first, but I pay attention. I pay attention to everything, what you say, what you what you don't say, what you what you leave out, what you tell your audience. Like I pay attention to all of it. I pay attention. And it's not about me being all up in your business. I'm just a projector, baby. That's what we do. We see right through. (laughs) You can't help it. I can't even help it. Like I can tell when someone is insecure about the position that they hold inside of their company. I can tell when someone is insecure about the type of leader that they are because they DM me and they say, I need you for emotional intelligence work. I need to be a better boss to my team. People don't want to stay and be on my team. And I know that there's some work I got to do here. So those are often the people that, I mean, I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to parade them on social media and say, Hey, here's a testimonial because they don't want to be paraded because they are ashamed. They don't want to be publicly celebrated. No, they're embarrassed. Are a lot of those people like women or non-binary people, people yes. who like 
you, you know, ostensibly we, we quote unquote should be emotionally yes. intelligent and intuitive. Oh, good time. Oh, they're, they're, um, they're definitely, they are not the people, they're public figures. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're public figures or they have amassed such a loyal cult mm-hmm. emphasis, heavy on the word cult. Yeah. Right? So, Literal <laughs> followers, right? Like followers yes. on Instagram. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And so they feel trapped and suffocated by the pedestal that the masses have put them on, that they don't even feel comfortable laying down the veil, laying down their armor, all of the protective armor that they have and saying, I am not perfect. Please do not make me your guru. Instead, Mm -hmm. they allow them to keep pedestaling them until it is completely out of control. And now they're being now when they do try to be vulnerable, people Um, throw it back in their face or people say like oh you know they kind of don't even listen to what it is that they're saying they're saying like oh maybe it you know my mentor it's it's all good it's all good it's really not that serious and then they come to me and they're like I feel like I'm suffocating because I am yeah I feel like I'm yelling into a void and no one can hear me like and I'm just like this is this is this is my bread and butter This is what I do. I make you get real with yourself because I think that without authenticity, what the fuck are we doing this for? You know, and I think that's also why the people that I've gotten on my podcast, I'm just so thankful and so blessed that they were open to being real because that was something I just am very intolerant of. I'm intolerant of when like I understand the whole PR thing. I get it, but I don't fucking care because (laughs) because the truth always sets you free. A lot of the time they're gatekeeping the actual truth and I'm just not about that. So if you want to be on my podcast, you're going to tell the truth. That's what we're going to do. Otherwise we're not going to talk. (laughs) Or you're like this episode not being aired. No, not being aired. And, and there's a few that will not be aired because I knew they were given all the PC answers and Mm -hmm. you know, I I'm, I'm a professional, so I didn't let on, but I'm like, this is a fucking whack ass interview. (laughs) and I'm bored to fucking tears. (laughs) I'm bored listening to it. This is yeah. seeing the light of day. And they never ask because they don't care. You see what right. I'm saying? Right. That is the worst when you're talking to someone and it is not giving what it needs to give. And you're yes. just like, yeah, oh, come it, on. It's the worst because instantly, and, you know, as a projector, I get bitter because my time just got wasted. Yes. Yeah, yes. absolutely. My time just got wasted. I didn't, I didn't fucking talk your head off, talk my audience's head off. And don't nobody even want to hear this shit because this is a stupid interview. Like nothing of substance was said, you know, yeah. <laughs> right. you try and force it out of them, but it's like, but it's it not going to happen in the interview. It's not. Yeah. And that's okay. Right. And I, I, I come to that realization, like, wow, this is going to take some therapy because it's not for me. <laughs> this isn't for me. Uh, you know, like, I'm not here to dig this shit out of you. I need for you to be a little bit open in order for us to do good work. The mindset work is not therapy. So if this is difficult for you, I don't know what to tell you. And so I think that, in online business ownership specifically, and just in entrepreneurship, people really struggle. They struggle to be real. They feel trapped. They're worried about what everyone else got to fucking say that ain't paying their bills. I mean, it is just an epidemic out here. And I'm just here to help, help free the people if they want to be free. Do you feel me? Absolutely. I mean, we hear this so much from our community. The people that are attracted the most to me are the ones that are so grounding. I have a friend named Natalia Benson. I don't know, Natalia, if you listen to this. Yeah, if you listen to this episode. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's my boo. Natalia, she's going to die when she hears this. We went out to dinner. This is like perfect. Like I attract people who are very like mystical, astrological sign. Like they're into that part of the spirituality. They also tend to be very chill very <laughs> their, their nervous system is regulated honey and so <laughs> it's it, it's a common theme wait that's a great attraction that you have like i do I'm i do like, attract. Yourself on the back. I yeah. well, so i go to dinner with her and she and we're like and i didn't know i took her to a club it was a fucking newport beach i don't fucking know this area like that i took her to the peninsula lounge and my dumb ass, and it turns into a fucking club and, <laughs> and so we're sitting there at dinner and she's like chill you know she is chill baby very chill I'm like screaming because I'm like I cannot hear myself I can't hear you so I'm yelling and she's like babe 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 I love you I love your energy but like can we take it down to like (laughs) 
<laughs> and I have never forgotten that. And I laugh my ass off. I love it. Y'all stay regulated. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate I love that. these tangents. I love these tangents. They're great. <laughs> but what you're talking about on social media is so many people. I mean, just like the being seen, the being yeah. seen of it all is yeah. like so terrifying or what's going to be reflected back to us. It is. I mean, I think for a while it was, especially during, you know, during the pa- early pandemic stage, people were very afraid of like just flat out being canceled. I feel like Big that has shifted. Time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> In a way. It just mm-hmm. looks different. People yep. are people aren't as afraid of being canceled, but they are afraid of being truly seen. So yep. it's a very weird juxtaposition where people are still struggling to show up as themselves because they don't know how it's going to be perceived, but yet they're not it's it's very it's very weird. It's almost like they they think that if I can hide who I really am for long enough, people just won't notice. And I can just fly under the radar and not be held accountable. Uh, So on that bit, we were talking about this earlier today before we hopped on. What do you think about the idea of admitting what you're capable of, what you're not capable of when it comes to especially being seen online? If you have a business and you're trying to do marketing, is there a point at which someone is like, you know what? It's kind of just not for me to show up this way, and I'm trying to force myself. Yeah. And what what do you think about finding the the kind of sticky point of is it that is it that it's just not for you, and there's another path for you in your business, or is it that you need to get over a certain yeah. like push that growth edge? Yeah. Or like something? oh, I see what you're saying. So you're basically asking um, what is what what are my thoughts on when people say like oh you know I don't want to show up as this, but when in reality they probably maybe they should maybe they should push themselves a little bit more. Yeah. I think that people have to know themselves and I don't mm-hmm. know that people know themselves as well as they think they do. Oh which is why it's so yeah. easy for them to be molded into whatever it is that people want them to be. They don't even know who yeah. they are. So when you're thinking about like, oh, you know, is this something that you need to learn or is it just something that you just get to not have to do? I think it's a matter of how Ooh. well do they really know themselves. Yeah. Do they know themselves? Because you know what you're capable of and what you're not. Look, I'm now I'm nobody's business coach. Yeah. yeah. I have no. I'm just going to be honest. I know nothing about. I know a little bit about how say, to build a business. Know nothing. You nothing. Know That's not lot. true. <laughs> I don't know the theory of how to build a business. I don't know all of those terms. Like I didn't know what a KPI was until like I just knew them as fucking goals. The fuck, like the fuck right. is a KPI. You know what I mean? And so. I am very honest and real about what my lane is and what it isn't. Mm -hmm. And while I am all about people finding their way and pivoting, a lot of the time people are doing, sometimes people are doing that because they really don't want to do the hard shit. They don't want to do the hard work. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go and maybe get that certification. They don't want to go and actually learn for themselves how to build a business. They would rather pair it with someone else told them, how someone else taught them, and then model it for somebody else instead of really getting themselves like really solidifying themselves as an expert in their industry. They are more comfortable with pretending to be an expert. That is why I have never shifted away from being a mindset and emotional intelligence coach. I'm Mm -hmm. not going to be your marketing expert. I'm not going to be your business expert. I don't give a shit what is sexier to sell. And I Mm -hmm. wish that people were more honest about that, that they are selling things because it seems sexier. It seems easier. It's easier to be a business coach than it is to say that you're a life coach. Mm-hmm. Right. It's easier to say that you are, you know, something else, you know, insert whatever here that seems more tangible, more respectable than to say what it is that you really want to do, which is to do maybe astrological readings for people. Or maybe you want to be a spiritual advisor for people. Right. People are afraid to truly be themselves and to truly own their corner of the Internet. And it it breaks my heart because it doesn't have to be that way. But they're chasing after money. A lot yeah. Of money. Well, on that note, I feel like a lot of people peg themselves as on as themselves as entrepreneurs, um, yes. even though they shouldn't be. You know, or oh, like, I agree. They're not they're not totally ready for that, and no. because there's some prestige that comes with it or whatever. We've really, really glamorized it in this like yes. capitalist individ in, individual centric egocentric world at this moment in time. We have. When it's just a career like anything else. Yeah. It's and it's not that it's not that sexy. And it ain't that no. deep. 
No, it's really not that deep. And it's really fucking hard if we're being honest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you if you have never thought about getting a nine to five, you're lying. Like the people, <laughs> you're lying. Sometimes I think it would be so much easier, but I love this work and I'm committed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, but I think I would be easier though. It would be, but would it? Right? Like, would it? Probably not. I probably feel like I was dying. I was choking because right. I really did not feel like I could be all of the years I spent in corporate. It brought me to where I am now. And I'm just so thankful I had all of that life experience, all of those things. But it really did stifle my personality and who God really fully created me to be. You know, I'm a rebel. I don't like authority. I don't like being told what to do and what time frame. Leave me the fuck alone. I'm a grown ass woman. I will do it when the fuck I want to do it. I've always been like that. Well, and, and you're a projector. So you yes. can do something that takes mm. another person eight hours. You can get yes. it done in two hours. Yes. And you're like, why do I need to sit at my desk to do this? Like, I don't like stupid done. things. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that is a made up rule. Who made up these rules? Who made the up the hour rules. work day. Yeah. Yes. No, I'm all about the four hour work day, baby. Four hour work day the fuck am I doing for eight hours I mean seriously it doesn't take that long right right and like the mind well I think you're like perfectly sort of like projecting the mindset of an entrepreneur versus someone who works at a desk job or is like climbing the ranks in society right there's such different mindsets basically like stay in line be good get good grades be perfect right like fly on ostensibly fly under the radar as yes. much as possible to get promoted. Yes. And then if you go out... And don't and ruffle any feathers on the way. Oh, yeah. No. Yes, yes, yes. Like, they basically, that. like, make yourself as vanilla as possible yes. so that you also, like, don't get abused or you don't I get know. advantage of or whatever it might be. It's and then cool. if you make this shift to entrepreneurship or, like, you know, your individual self doing your thing, it's the total opposite. And I can imagine on social media that is also what's really... Uh, alarming to people. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. I think especially with things shifting to video, um, you know, I think that hopefully the real skits go away. However, <laughs> I am about, I mean, like, I get it, but I, I think it's mad corny. I think yes. that can we just keep the video format? I'm all about the video because I do think that people seeing your face and being able to connect to the person, I find the shift in social media to be so refreshing because it, it humanizes you, you know? But anyways, yeah, it's harder than ever, I think, for people to figure out if they don't already know, who am I without all of this? Yeah. How do they do that? Like, how do you? <laughs> yeah. So I think so what they do with me, at least, is um, one of the first things we cover um, when they work with me one to one is we cover your identity. Like, who are you? Who were you before all of this? What did you mm. enjoy? What was your dream? What did you really want to do before you were the person that made millions before you introduced yourself as a six figures, multiple six figure, seven figure mentor, blah, blah, fucking blah, you know, fucking shoot me. Like <laughs> what? Who were you before all of the money? I don't care about that. Money mm. comes and goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people make money, they lose money. It, 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 that's irrelevant. Are you happy? Like, who are you? What is it that you really want to be doing? What would set your heart on fire? You know, and, and that's how we get to the root of who they really are. And then if they come to, if they're a leader that has a team and has employees and contractors and things and they want to do emotional intelligence, we do a um, leadership self-assessment where they, they can't lie. So they basically, um, uh, the self-assessment, the data will show me um, how often they demonstrate those actual said emotional intelligence skills inside of their actual business. Wow. And then if they want their team's feedback, that's even, that gets deeper because people are afraid, deathly mm. afraid of oh. Oh negative gosh. feedback big time oh yeah you think all these people who talk about most of the time when they're talking the loudest about emotional intelligence they're not really doing the work because they come to me and they say hey what would that look like i tell them yeah if you want to do the the you know the 180 assessment i would get feedback from a couple of your employees about your, how well you demonstrate these skills and then they'd be able to give you qualitative feedback as well and write out the reason why they said what they said and it um they were terrified. Oh, of course. And it's very objective. There's no bashing, but it's very real. And I, again, I think people are afraid to truly meet themselves. We're taking a quick pause to talk about Open, one of our sponsors. Open is a mindfulness app built to transform your life. And boy, oh boy, can I just say, Open has made the last 
eight months of my life a lot easier <laughs> because I've been pregnant and uh, definitely not going to yoga class, definitely not going to Pilates, definitely not going to any meditation classes just because I have, I've been really sick for most of my pregnancy and then um, very swollen. It's Shrek feet, SpongeBob feet. It's just not a cute look. And being able to exercise from home at my own pace and my own timing on the open app has been a godsend. And when I don't want to exercise, when I'm having a spiral panic attack about the fact that I'm bringing a human onto this planet in 2020, I can just turn on a meditation and bring myself back to center. It is chef's kiss amazing. I use open to fall asleep. I use open to do mini breathwork sessions. And I also love their Pilates. They have the best music curation. They have really amazing guides. We can't say enough positive things about them. And you get to try them free for 30 days, which is an amazing deal because it's such a premium subscription. And it's just a beautiful experience through and through. So we will link your 30 days free in the show notes, or you can use code holisticism at open.com backslash holisticism. So don't miss out. Honestly, it couldn't hurt you to try even just one little meditation session. It's about to be a little crazy time of year. You might benefit when you're <laughs> well, like, I'm sick of my little. family. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) I mean, one month of open alone is less than the cost of a yoga class, a Pilates class, or a meditation class. So it's definitely worth it. Or even like two matches. (laughs) If you go to a coffee shop, they're like eight fifty (laughs) now. Yeah, you can either get a a matcha with CBD oil in it once, or you can you can open every single day of the month. Every day, honestly, go sign up with open dot com backslash holisticism. Sounds like you work with a range of people, right? People who are kind of just starting their their work and trying to build a strong foundation of being seen. Yes. And then people who are like, wait, I just built this career for the last five years, like being the opposite. Yes. You know, of, I, of both sides personal. of the spectrum. Yes. yes. For yes. those people who have like been around the block and are like, oh, this is really not working. What is the emotional intelligence like? Mm. What is their biggest hurdle that they often have Ooh. to overcome or how does it kind of show up? For oh, them? this is good. One of the biggest ones is emotional reasoning, being able mm-hmm. to make decisions, um, combining logic and their emotions. A lot of business owners make a lot of business decisions based off of how they feel rather mm-hmm. than what the data is showing them. And sometimes they only do one or the other, which is not good. You got to combine both. And so that is something, especially when there's an economic downturn, especially when there's any type of, let's say, in, you know, in the online world, there's a lot of people saying, oh, you know, the way people are buying or changing, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of people making emotional pivots right now that are actually tanking their business because they are not staying firm and strong in their expertise and what they know to be true, regardless of what the economic downturn trends are. There are a lot of CEOs that make very emotionally based decisions or they make decisions without any emotion and they don't give a fuck who it hurts. There needs to be a combination of both. That's the one. The second one I think they struggle the most with is inspiring performance, especially leaders. How do you make people want to work with you and stay? Well, I'll tell you one thing is not going to be micromanaging their asses. I know that. (laughs) Right. But a lot of especially when we're talking about a lot of the business owners in our industry, the ones that are solopreneurs and have built this empire, they still have very small teams. They're, they have lean, small teams that generate millions of dollars in revenue because we have very low overhead. And so sometimes the way that they are leading their teams, they struggle with authenticity of truly saying what they mean and meaning what they say. Their lack of follow through when it comes to that. So they might tell their employees and their staff one thing and then you know, some shit happens in the world or in their business. And then all of a sudden they do the whole switcheroo. And then that makes people that work for you not fucking trust you because Mm -hmm. they can't trust what you say. So those are the top two to three that I find that many leaders are struggling with is how to not make just emotional decisions and how to make not just factual logic based decisions. You want to combine your intuition with the fucking facts and then come to the right answer, the right response. And so for a lot of people, they talk a lot of shit about having emotional intelligence, but in terms of demonstrating it in their leadership and demonstrating it, even in the way they run their business, they struggle big time. Mm. 
talking and about the truth. Is deep. <laughs> is deep. How do you do it for yourself in your business? Like, what's your process? What's your system or yeah. your framework? Ooh, for myself? Yeah, mm-hmm. combining like well, the data good. with. This is so good. So I, I say this all the time. My feelings are not the facts. Mm-hmm. Just because I feel something doesn't make it true. Right. And so that's also why I I love and I value personal development. It's not I don't believe it's a have to. I don't think you need to hire a coach. I don't think you need to do any of those things, but Mm -hmm. you need to do your personal development in whatever way, shape or form that comes in. And if you choose to hire somebody that's an expert in that area, that's fucking great. But Mm -hmm. so for me. I also have a coach. So that's something that I love um, having. Um, I had a therapist for a point in time um, to really help keep me grounded. But I also like to run my emotions through the filter of um, the same way that I would do it with my clients. So it's, you know, why is it that you are feeling this way? Is it actually true that X? is happening, yes. right? So let's say, for instance, my engagement's down for a couple weeks and I, you know, the applications I'm used to getting to work with me slow down. Is it actually true that things are changing or is it true that I need to sell better? Is that the truth? Like, is it true that I need to do a stronger call to action? Is mm-hmm. it true? Like, what is actually the truth and what is the lie? So what is the mm-hmm. feeling and versus what yes. is the fact? Because your feelings are not always the facts. I do believe your feelings matter, but they cannot be the sole reason why why you make super important decisions. And so everything I teach my clients, I have to do on myself. Mm -hmm. Um, When it comes to even, you know, um, leading a team, I've never led like a huge team. I've always had individual contractors here and there, but even with them, that's hard. And I Mm -hmm. have to, just because they're not employees doesn't mean that I don't grant them the same respect, the same, I have to still do the work. I have to still make sure I'm communicating my expectations clearly. I call myself to the table before anyone else can. Mm-hmm. I think that's why I'm so good at what I do because you can't tell me shit about myself that I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. You can't. You literally can't. I don't even know how that's fucking possible because I fucking see myself really clearly every day. <laughs> every day I'm like, Topsy, you're full of shit. You're full of shit. You need to go and tell your audience the fucking truth. You're full of shit. You, because even it doesn't matter who you are. We can all fall victim to making the truth sound prettier. Oh, Making the truth sound nicer, packaged in a nice bow. I can fall victim to that just like anyone else Mm -hmm. because I'm not always trying to have these deep ass conversations. (laughs) But you can't help it. Are you a Scorpio? Yeah. (laughs) Wait, how do you know? How do you know I'm a Scorpio? (laughs) Because you want to have deep conversations. Is that a Scorpio trait? Oh, my God. Scorpio is like of the water signs. Yeah, you want to go all the way to the bottom of the ocean. Like, that is me. Matter if, if who you bring with you drowns, you're like, no, we're going. <laughs> we're going so deep. <laughs> this makes so much sense. <laughs> this is so funny. I need to like learn more about water science and astrology because y'all, between y'all and Natalia Benson, y'all know me so fucking well. I think y'all might know me better than I know myself. So I think I need to get up on this train. I need to, I need to look into holisticism, honey. I need to look into this membership. <laughs> it seems like you you know yourself pretty well. <laughs> I, I do, but you know, I feel like there's always more. You know, like I'm always ready to go there. <laughs> it's, it's all just information, right? Like I, it is. What you're reminding me of is like information is neutral, including our feelings, until we like ascribe meaning to it, right, mm-hmm. or make meaning yeah. out of it. And yes. so often, our business feels so personal, or like when someone attacks us online or yes. criticizes us or yes. follows us, it can, it feels personal and we make meaning out of it. And we do. is it ever good to make meaning out of it and take it as feedback or, or should it be something that we just like, mm. I don't know, try to remain neutral around? Uh, you know, I think that we're humans. We're, we're humans, not robots. And so sometimes we will make meaning out of things that don't need, a, you know, meaning to it. And then later on we'll realize, Oh shit. Like I ascribe meaning to something that was just information. So I don't think it's completely possible for us to be neutral all the time because we are born with so many different emotions. I believe that we're supposed to feel all of the feels. It's just a matter of what you do with it after. That's really what the heart of my work is on. Whenever people want to come work with me one to one, it's you're not going to be shamed for your feelings over here. So let's talk about how you're fucking jealous of your best friend whose business keeps skyrocketing and she's earning, you know, million dollars a month. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about how it feels. 
so that you can express it. You can talk about it, not judge yourself for it anymore because mm-hmm. it's neutral. It's normal. We were meant to feel all the feels, jealousy and envy. Jealousy invites you to really be honest about the dreams and desires that you thought would never come true, that someone else has been able to experience. And you're jealous of that. It's OK. Let's just like put that out on the table. And now what are we going to do with that feeling? What are we going to do with that emotion? What are we going to do with this energy? How can we make this um, not so not so serious? Mm-hmm. It's normal to have these feelings. Yeah. It's just more about how is it that you are? What did my spiritual um, bay say? Alchemize it. How are you yes. alchemizing yes. these feelings, honey? Oh, I like that. <laughs> I had a therapist who would always talk about the story aspect and be like, what novella have you written? Yes, novella. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we love writing novellas yeah. about shit that doesn't need a novella written about. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. She'd be like, is it a short story or is it a series? How far back does this go? And I was like, <laughs> that's a good therapist. Yeah. That's a good therapist. Oh, my God. And then it kind of adds a little bit of humor to the fact that we're ridiculous and our minds are, you know, <laughs> monkeys. <laughs> yes, we are so ridiculous. That's one of the things, too, when I tell people when you come work, you can't experience it until you work with me. Is this work? It is heavy, but at the same time, it's fucking hilarious. Yes. <laughs> it's so it's also funny. Light. It's also light. It doesn't need to be. It's, it's, just, it's just about really allowing, uh, inviting your humanity into the room. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Right. As an entrepreneur, it's so hard for us sometimes to just invite our humanity into the room. And so when we see other people doing it, sometimes it does trigger us. Sometimes it does make us see parts of ourselves that we'd rather not see. Mm -hmm. But when we can invite our humanity into the room and entrepreneurship, it allows for us to be truly seen. And then our gifts can really shine bright because I believe that. Until we do that, everything is kind of dimmed. And yes, you're going to experience lots of success. You might make tons of fucking money. But how much more better would that money that you make be? How much more abundant could it be if you allowed yourself to be real? If you if you knew that your audience isn't going to abandon you because you share with them that maybe you've had to file for bankruptcy. What if you knew that you wouldn't be judged for the fact that half of your staff left you know, left working for you um, over the last six months because you allowed your stress to dictate how you um, led your team, right? Mm-hmm. And so a lot of us are so afraid of allowing our humanity to really shine through. And then we block other people's ability to truly see us and truly know us for who we are. And then we block, so we, we cock block so many opportunities from coming our way. Mm-hmm. So many collaborations. People are craving the real. Oh, yeah. People want real shit. They want real. So we have one question that we like to ask people related to humanity and thinking about a time, maybe your recent past or it could be even further back whenever where you were like, I'm so healthy. I'm on my shit. Look at me. Go, go, go. And then you look back and you're like, damn. I was a little toxic. (laughs) Oh, my God. Okay, when was this? This is good. Oh, I was definitely I was definitely toxic (laughs) when I first started in the online business world. And I still had my um, brick and mortar therapy practice. Mm -hmm. Um, So I still had that. I was living in Michigan, still had that. And I was, you know, transitioning into um, more like helping business owners with mindset and, you know, really looking at their perspectives and how they view the world and how that affected the way that they felt and the way that they operated inside of their businesses. And so I was so fucking judgy. Oh my God. My content y'all from then, it makes like literally nails on a chalkboard. I was, I was real and I could, I I could benefit getting more of that. I was very bold, even more bolder, but it was kind of bordering on mean. And I noticed when I look back at that content, I felt like I had something to prove. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I am mortified, (laughs) like looking back, I'm like, but I know that this shit, like it needs to remain on my platform. It needs to be seen because you see the growth, no matter who you are, we all have work to do. And when I first joined the online business community for the first time, I, for the first time, I think ever, because it kind of in corporate, I've always had a big personality. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Always. I've always been kind of the problem child. But also the favorite, probably. 
Oh, I think so. I think my, my, my previous bosses liked, I think they had a love, not like relationship with me. They loved me when they loved me, but they didn't like me when I questioned their authority. That's what it was. And so I remember that. And so that didn't change. And so anyways, going into the online business community, you bring all that shit with you if you don't work on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. You bring. And so I was used to being this, and I've never said this on a podcast before, but I have always had a big personality and I've always been kind of uh, a big fish in a small pond. I don't know how to feel saying I'm that. I'm just but better than everyone else, okay? That's just how it is. Yes, <laughs> yes. I make character energy. <laughs> hey, you have to own your truth. Yeah, you can know. Listen. It sounds so terrible saying it because I would never say that shit now. But I've always been like, I'm just the shit. And I, I want for more people to understand the reason why I'm so conceited is because it's the truth. I am the shit. So then I go into the online world and all of a sudden you realize that you might not be the shit like you thought. You realize that there's other people that are also the shit, that yeah. are also loud, right? That are also bold. Yeah. That are also authentic. And I got fucking angry. Oh, yeah. Because you're like, are you lying? Yes. <laughs> like, I got bitter. You've got to be lying because I, I'm used to being the best. So you must not be. <laughs> you must not be. But yes, exactly. And so when I look back at that content, that shines through is I just want to like hug her like and be like, bitch, you did not have to do all of that. You did not have to say all of that. You did not have to be all of that. All you needed to be ever was yourself. That's enough. You don't need to compete with nobody because nobody's your fucking competition. You're your own competition. And so, yes, that is where I met my humanity, looking back at my previous work and seeing how much I I felt like my voice didn't matter. I felt like people didn't understand. Because at the time, people were saying mindset isn't tangible. Da, 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 da. I just remember a lot of that being the talk in the online business world. It was you need to tie it to a tangible ROI. Otherwise, mm -hmm. people aren't going to buy and no one wants to buy mindset. Right. No one wants to actually. So I just remember being so bitter mm -hmm. and being so and watching these people invest in all of these fucking scams, to be honest. And I'm just yeah. like, do you not realize that's a fucking scam? And, and then it was like further proving my toxic point, which is mm. I know so much. I'm just so smart. Yes. Like I'm just such a turn on for myself. <laughs> I know these things. These people don't get it. Othering myself and other people. Mm. And so I really it took it took for me to be humbled mm. in online entrepreneurship in order for me to see like, you know what? I have a lot to learn just like anyone else. Mm hmm. That was a moment, but I've never forgotten it. And I hope that I have continued to be on that path of, you know, really allowing myself to just truly be seen even with my flaws. Yeah. Because Thank you for sharing I'm that. I'm so worthy. Yeah. Yeah, truly. It, it sounds like to me, you're also really like an advocate for an ally and yes. like what, and I think that's really true, right? When we enter an industry, we often see, especially if it's like close to the chest for us. Yes. We see the scammers and we see like, yes. hey, this is actually kind of fucked up and I yes. want to change this. Yeah. We want to call it out or, or yep. call people in. Right. And we're truly embodying this like archetype of the advocate for and caring for other people and like yes. going to battle for other people. Yes. And it can come off as resentful oh, or like, time. you know, you're throwing other people under the bus to make yourself look good. It's big time. Like a, a funny sort of line to sort of dance between. It is. It is. And, you know, it's interesting because even in 2020, and I don't think I've talked about this on a podcast, in 2020, when the racial divide became apparent to white folks um, mm -hmm. on a public scale and they were faced with it, right? I'm just being honest. Yeah, I was very true. angry. I didn't realize how angry. I did not yeah. realize. I, I mean, I did not. I, I don't even, the anger that came through in a lot of my content, yeah. even, because I finally felt like, duh, I've been fucking trying to tell y'all this shit. Right, I've yeah. been trying to tell y'all that y'all need diversity in your group programs because, right. frankly, I don't like to join a lot of group programs in the online industry because right. they're all fucking white. So yeah. then I want to go over to, I want I want diversity, true diversity, not just diversity of thought, not just diversity of, because that matters, not just diversity of, you know, um, gender identity or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, I want all of it. Why can't I have all of it? And mm -hmm. I just remember finally being like, see, I told y'all motherfuckers, y'all need to fucking learn. Mm -hmm. Stop hiring the same fucking people over and over because it just perpetuates 
the same notion, which is the white, pretty, blonde or brown haired woman becomes a millionaire off Mm -hmm. the backs of all of these people. Like we need more people of color to be to be at the top so that it can at least be equitable. So I just remember in 2020, um, to your point, Michelle, being very yeah, I, I thought that I was being an advocate, but I, I definitely went over the line and I became angry. And that is not me. So I very publicly started really basically saying, like, I would never say some of the things that I said before. I would never say that now because people don't wow. hear you when you're speaking out of anger. Mm-hmm. You don't do anything. You yeah. do nothing when you speak out. of. I don't believe that it was. I didn't speak with emotional intelligence. I spoke with fucking anger because I'm human, you know? And so now I re I see that now I realize that now. And I made so many incredible friendships from that year, um, mm-hmm. from me calling people in Jenna Kutcher became one of my friends. There were, there were certain people that I just was able to be in proximity with and really get to know. And I really realized like, fuck, like we are all just trying to figure this shit out. We're not perfect. So anyway, I never talked about that on a podcast before, but I I have nothing to lose by being honest. I don't care. Like, you're not going to judge me any harder than what I've judged myself. You know what I mean? So I've made peace with all of it. And I'm just so fucking proud that I've come this far. But I know that I still have work to do. We all do. And anger is like, I don't know, I think in the spiritual world in particular, like anger is vilified. But it is. But I think it's so righteous. (laughs) It is. It is. And it's such a powerful tool. And it's. Yeah, a, a symbol of like when a boundary or a line has been crossed for us. Yeah. It's like, that's yeah. good. Pay attention. And, and it for can sure. be like really fast fuel in a good way, can, you know? In yeah. a good way. It can be. And, you know, and I wish that I would have known that even a couple years ago. I wish I would have known that, you know what, I get to feel this, but I get to process this more <laughs> longer than maybe what I think I need to. And then I get to share whatever truth comes out of that. And that's what I've been doing now. And it comes out so much better that way. But you have to live and you learn and you live and you learn publicly. And I just want to show people that you're always redeemable. You're not perfect. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to make mistakes publicly. And some people won't like you for it. But the people that really fucking matter, they're going to stick around because they understand your humanity. You're allowed to be human. And we've got to start allowing people to be human. Absolutely. We we had an interview with a wonderful um, content creator, and I think she described herself as a former activist talking about this anger as sacred rage. Yes, sacred rage. Yes. It's Kim Sarah, and she's on the podcast this month as well. Janelle and I had a really great conversation with her, and I think it's so important to harness and acknowledge it and alchemize it to your yes. point. And that it doesn't need to be hidden, stuffed away. It doesn't. Yeah. It doesn't. And I think that's why I love, I love mindset work. I love doing the emotional intelligence work that I do with CEOs and business owners because I just want to show you that you can feel all of those feelings and not allow it to consume you. And who better to help guide you through it than somebody who fucking understands as well? You know, I get it. I'm not saying any of this stuff above anybody. I'm right here with you. I'm in the work with you. You're so fucking cool. Yeah. Oh my God. That is fucking cool. <laughs> also, your name is incredible. I love it. Oh, I just needed to so say you know, that. Topsy is my nickname. You know that? Oh. Yes. Yeah, my real name is uh, Temi Tope. Beautiful. That is yes. beautiful. Yes. God has his arms around you. God has his hands around you. Something like that. I think that's oh. what it means. All of my, all of our names. <laughs> I think that's something. what it means. I mean, <laughs> fuck. I mean, <laughs> but yeah, I'm West African, Nigerian. All of our names mean something. So t- Topsy is just like a cute American nickname <laughs> for, for the people that don't know how to pronounce Tammy Tope, but I'm actually fine with it because the only people that call me Tammy Tope are my parents when they're pissed. <laughs> Sometimes just in conversation, but no. so when other people call me that, I'm like, I, I, I don't know, I'm in trouble, I don't like right. this What did I do? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this was a blast. Oh, oh my gosh. And it's so much fun. You have an opening right now for a program that you're running. Is that closing anytime oh, soon? Oh my god, it closed the other day. Um, oh, okay. But if you, but if you mentioned this podcast, um, I could take a little look, looky loo at your uh, application. My program is called Destroy the Mindset Drama, and I teach business owners who coach evidence based coaching skills. So I really want to help people be able to serve um, all folks of all backgrounds, all you know, belief systems, um, skin colors, ethnicities, etc 
be able to coach them from an objective evidence based foundation that just allows for you to not just rely on your intuition and your life experience to help them. Because if you haven't had their life experience, you cannot only coach from your own. So that's why it's important to have this like neutral um, foundation that you come from. And so that's destroy the mindset drama. I teach you three evidence based coaching skills. You learn all the things, the difference between mental health and coaching, how to know whether a client is struggling, how to support a client who's struggling with their mental health and just like how to run a damn good fucking business and coach people well and get away from this perverted bastardized version of coaching coaching to make money which is Mm -hmm. what our industry has turned into and money is definitely the byproduct of coaching but I really am passionate about the skill set of coaching and so that's my program destroy the mindset drama you can go to my website at topsyvandenbosch.com slash dtmd Um, the application might still be up for a few days um, but I just closed public enrollment so that's what I um, have currently going on and now I get to chill for the rest of the fucking year (laughs) you do (laughs) well deserved also Topsy is a great follow on Instagram as well oh yes please follow me on Instagram Um, my content is good my fucking reels are hilarious I'm just (laughs) like so fucking (laughs) smart I mean I could talk myself up all fucking day but yes go and follow me on Instagram at Topsy Vandenbosch Um, I married a um, hot as fuck Dutch and Italian guy which is where Vandenbosch comes from he is sexy as fuck I mean I'm not even I'm not even joking (laughs) and a doctor and and he's a doctor I mean my god and he loves rap music I mean he is just he is just chef's kiss so um, so anyways, go and follow me on Instagram. And then if you want to learn more about my framework and how I do mindset coaching and all of that, download my um, my free guide, How to um, Escape the Thought Spiral in Entrepreneurship at topsyvandenbosch.com slash freebie. I should probably put a different fucking slug there outside of freebie, but it's a great <laughs> guide. <laughs> Honestly, that works. I'm going to remember it. So yeah, yeah, exactly. it's mission accomplished. You got to keep it simple. You, yeah. you got to keep it simple for us basic girlies on the internet. <laughs> I only have so many brain cells, you know. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> this was so much fun. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you course, so much for coming you. on. We could keep going. I know it. Oh, yeah. my God. I feel like we could go on for forever. The Twelfth House is produced by yours truly, Wallace Miller Blancher. Our theme music is made by Nathan McKay, and our wonderful editing is done by Softer Sound Studios, who you can find more information about in our show notes.